Well, hello and welcome from Wales. I'm currently exploring the Vale of Glamorgan, but as we're in Wales, there must be a castle or an old house nearby. Wait a minute, what's that over my shoulder? Ta-da! I knew there'd be one somewhere. Well, this is Old Beaupre Castle. Old Beaupre, people pronounce it Old Beaupre, Old Beaupre, and even I've heard it pronounced Booper Castle. Well, anyway, I'm gonna call it Old Beaupre Castle. And just to give you some idea of where we are, if you saw the video from last week, I'm about three miles upstream, up the River Thor, from East Orchard Castle, near St. Athen. Well, anyway, like many places, like the place last week, East Orchard Castle, Old Beaupre Castle isn't exactly a castle. It's a fortified manor house. And as we see when we go in, the fortified part was really more for show and showing off rather than a real defensive structure. Well, the wind's picked up and it's a bit chilly. So hopefully you can hear me okay. I'll turn away from the wind. Well, anyway, before we go in, uh, a bit about the history of the place. Hopefully it's open. I came to film this back in November. And it was all locked up. So fingers crossed we can get inside. The building dates from the 1300s. But what we see today is from the extensive rebuild in the 16th century. The work was started by Sir Rice Mansell. We've come across him before. He, uh, Sir Rice Mansell inherited, well inherited, he bought uh, Margam Abbey after the dissolution of the monasteries. Uh, he bought it off his good mate Henry VIII, obviously who you know if you want to become a rich and wealthy landowner. Well anyway, he started the work, but William Bassett, married Sir Rice Mansell's daughter and inherited this property and he continued the building work and added many of the showy and grand features of the building. So let's go and see if it's open. Hopefully it is. The door is open. That's a good sign. We can go in. Just how to get here though. There's a road there but that's private. So you have to park about 400 yards away across a field. It's a small lay-by enough for about three cars. And it is signposted. So you come across a few styles and you can't miss it. So I'll put the location of where to park on a map coming up now. So, old Bopri Castle, let's go and take a look. Well, above the main doorway of the gatehouse, you can see the Bassett family crest and the motto translated reads as better death than dishonour. So that's something maybe Boris Johnson should uh, adopt. <laughs> well, anyway, as you can see, the Mansell family, sorry, the Bassett family were very wealthy and influential in the area. But by the time the English Civil War came, they backed the wrong side, they were royalists. So the estate was seized and they had to pay quite a lot of money to get their estate back. And they never really recovered from that. And by the time the place was sold in the 18th century, it was quite run down. And I think only part of it was being lived in. Well, apart from the features on the door of the gatehouse, the front of the building is quite austere. The design really focused inwards rather than outwards. So as you enter the gatehouse, they've got this on the wall and it shows you the, the plan and a painting of how it would have looked like when it was completed back in 1600. There's a bit of a wind tunnel here at the moment. Well, I'll do, I'll put that plan up now so you can see. 
and it also tells you about the the family, the Bassa family motto. I said better death. It says rather death than dishonor. So let's go into the, the courtyard. Oh, it's windy. When I mentioned how you pronounce Beaupre, 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 I can see how people, some people call it, it says Booper, but if you look at the Welsh spelling, that's probably where the, the Booper part comes from. Well, I'm now in the courtyard, so let's have a look at some of the features. Over there, this corner, that was the original gatehouse. And if you look carefully, you can see the old arch from the original construction. It's been filled in, and there's Tudor windows in it. But here, that's, fr that's from the original building and you can't miss this this porch in the yellow stone but when you look around you see that and you look at the the gray stone walls but when it was built all this gray stone was rendered the same color as that so it wouldn't be all this gray it would all be bright yellow a lot of buildings now you go and see them and they're grey stones, ruins, but in their day, many were, like I said, rendered or painted. They weren't like this. Let's have a closer look at that porch. Well, apart from the base, which is quite worn, the actual structure is in quite good shape. There's three panels there and I can't make them out it's about built this porch in 1600 at the age of 65. Well, that large structure on the western side of the courtyard, that was the main living accommodation. And it's the earliest part of the Tudor building. The windows are quite large, so it would be quite a grand building. And finally, on the eastern side, it's a small wall. And I think that was just a, a garden feature. So many of these buildings are open. So let's go and look around inside. Uh, before I do, can you see that there? There, that's a chimney, the top's missing. There must have been quite a big fireplace. Let's see if we can see the other side of it when we go in. And obviously that's the building I was talking about earlier the main living part, the rice mantel part. Before I go in, I'd like to point out it's half past 11. It's been open since 10. It's free to get in, by the way, no charge. And I'm on my own. No one else here at all. Let's go in. So we just saw the outside of the chimney, but so this is the fireplace. Think of all the people who would have stood here warming their hands after being out for a hunt across the field on their horses. I don't know if the mic's picking it up, but it's quite a strong wind howling through the ruins. It's very atmospheric as you walk around. The house has got its own soundtrack.
So this is the main living part of the building. All the floors have gone, obviously. You find little interesting bits as you walk around. Like this doorway has been bricked up. What's in there? Hello. That little area in there, there's a water channel running out of the building down to the river. And I think I saw on the plan, I had an area marked privies, toilets. I know the house was quite modern for its time. And it looks like all the waste flowed into that chamber and out. This is interesting. When you come in the porch, there's graffiti where people have uh, carved their names into the stonework. But it's interesting because it's not new. 1850, 1859, 1911, 1719. And you can tell some of these are old because they're writing so good, as opposed to the, the rubbish you get now. So I'm now on top of the walls, looking down on the fields and into the courtyard, and the wind has really picked up. <laughs> So that was Old Bowpree Castle in the Vale of Glamorgan, one of the less well-known places in Wales. Definitely worth a visit, free to get in. Check out the CADA website for the update information. And more videos coming up next, and I'll see you in one of those. And one of them is going to be the walk to East Orchard Castle, which is just three miles down the road. So I'll see you in that. Bye.